Man, two-stroke riders really love their two-strokes. They act like it's God's gift to the dirt bike world. In the beginning, the gods created the heavens, the earth, and a small dirt track called Eden, which they kept a secret from the other gods, for they knew if word got out, the track would become crowded and eventually get shut down. Finally, they created the two-stroke dirt bike and the first men to ride it. The first men and women had some great motos, and they saw that it was good. After a while, the wicked amongst mankind wanted to improve on the design of the gods, and in league with demons they created the first four-stroke dirt bike. Considered an abomination by some, others praised it. The evil four-stroke plague swept down on the moto world like locusts to smite the two-stroke and its riders. Soon, the two-stroke was cast out of Eden, and many descendants of the first men wailed in sadness. Lo, they were cursed, and they suffered through the gnarliest of Nar-Nar trails under the yoke of their four-stroke oppressors. That is, until the most righteous dirt bike gods, Kato, Husky, Beta, and even Yamaha, reached into the abyss and returned the smoker to the light. To this day, the people of the earth remain divided, but none can deny that a new top end is cheaper and easier to do on a two-stroke. Uh, that's not very scientific, so let's get serious for a minute. In reality, the two-stroke was actually invented after the four-stroke, and the first dirt bikes were actually just road bikes that were being ridden off-road, and those were actually split between four-stroke and two-stroke. By the late 60s, two-stroke seemed to have the upper hand, but things started to change by the early 2000s with most of the big companies putting all of their research and development funds into four-stroke technology, and some point to higher emission standards as the culprit. But it's more likely that the AMA's decision to allow 450cc four-strokes to compete with 250cc two-strokes had more to do with it than anything else. And now the arms race between smokers and thumpers is heating up again as KTM and Husky have pushed the R&D of smokers and brought the first fuel-injected two-strokes to market. To ensure you don't miss a single episode, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell icon to receive a notification whenever a new video comes out. For the more serious rock stars out there, you can support the channel through my website at www.joerockstar.com. There you will find links to help keep the channel running via PayPal, Patreon, or purchasing Joe Rockstar gear like hats and t-shirts. To be honest, I'm having trouble with this question myself. I'm struggling to reconcile my experience with the two-stroke, with the heaps of praise that two-strokes are given by their owners. Now most people say that two-strokes are lighter. And that may be true for the most part, but compared to modern four strokes, not so much. What I can say is the two stroke wears its weight better than the four stroke. With a low center of gravity and less reciprocating mass, by all rights, the two stroke should feel a lot lighter than the four strokes. Now, when it comes to power, CCs to CCs, the two stroke is much more powerful because the two stroke provides power on every stroke of the piston. We'll learn more about how that works later. But if you were to put a 250cc four-stroke against a 250cc two-stroke, you would quickly realize that the two-stroke has much more power. Now the next thing I hear a lot about is maintenance. How cheap it is to maintain a two-stroke. Which is true, it's cheap and it's easy. Except, you're going to be tinkering with it a lot. And with the improved reliability of the modern four-stroke, you'll probably find yourself tinkering with that two-stroke more often than you would a four-stroke. So unless you own an older four-stroke, that probably cancels out. Now the initial purchase price, if purchased from the same manufacturer, the two-stroke will be cheaper than the four-stroke. And from what I've seen by doing my shopping around, the two-strokes actually hold their resale value longer than the four-strokes do. Now hands down, the most intriguing claim to me about two-strokes is that they handle better in technical situations like this one. Now here I am on the four-stroke and I haven't had the chance to do this yet on the two-stroke, so I haven't had the opportunity to verify that claim. But given the design of the two-stroke engine and the way that it delivers power, this claim seems to make sense. Most two-stroke faithful wouldn't like to admit it, but there are some drawbacks. And we'll look at those after we take a look at how this engine works. Now there's a ton of YouTube videos out there with animations showing you how a two-stroke engine functions, and this video is not going to be any different. 
There just isn't a whole lot of room for originality when it comes to this subject. And I gotta tell you, this wasn't easy for me to make, so let's slow it down and take a look. A typical two-stroke like mine works like this. The piston has an almost airtight seal inside the cylinder. And as the piston is driven up, either by the starter, a kickstart, or momentum from combustion, it sucks material into the case from the carburetor. This material is a mixture of air and premix. Premix is a mixture of fuel and oil. The oil mixed with the fuel is what lubricates the engine components, and that's something we'll talk about later because it's important. Anyway, as the piston is pushed down in the cylinder, it creates pressure in the crankcase, and all that air and fuel in there is being squished like a grape, and it can't escape the way it came in because of the one-way valve called reeds. Eventually, the piston passes a hole in the side of the cylinder called the transfer port, and the air-fuel mix is now free to escape through this newly opened hole. It makes its way up the transfer port and into the cylinder. Now as the piston rises again, it sucks more fuel and air into the crankcase while simultaneously squeezing the now trapped fuel and air that entered the cylinder via the transfer port. This is called compression. And once the mixture is fully compressed into this tiny space left above the piston in the cylinder head, it is ignited by a spark from the spark plug and a small explosion happens in this tiny space. It forces the piston back down again and that part is called combustion. As the piston goes down, it exposes another hole in the cylinder wall that leads to the exhaust pipe. As fresh fuel and air mixture makes its way into the cylinder, the burn fuel and air mixture is pushed out as exhaust. And this process is repeated over and over again at lightning speeds. So to make a long story short, this frenetic pushing of the piston up and down is what turns the crankshaft, which turns the gears that make the bike go. Now, with all those parts moving up and down so fast, there's going to be a lot of friction. And we need to cool that down and keep it lubricated. And that's where the premix comes in. And premix, like I said before, is just a mix of fuel and two stroke oil premixed together before you put it into the gas tank. Now, the owner's manual for the 300XC says to mix it at 60 to 1. That's one part oil for 60 parts of gasoline. Now to make this real simple, I got one of these measuring cups that tells me when I have 60 to 1 for every 2.5 gallons. So I just need to do this twice for every 5 gallon jug of gas. And so it's just that simple. So what's the big deal about mixing gas? Well really nothing. But it's just one more step, one more thing that you have to do that you don't have to do if you have fuel injection. And it's not only mixing fuel, you also have to make sure that your carburetor is jetted properly. Now, some of the viewers who've watched the previous videos recognized right away, just by the sound of my engine, that the 300 was not properly jetted. Not only could they tell that it wasn't properly jetted, but they could also tell that it was running too rich. Now, carburetor and jetting issues don't just apply to two strokes. Four strokes with carburetors have the same problems. However, you would be hard pressed to find a modern four stroke that was still using a carburetor. Fortunately, jetting woes might be a thing of the past thanks to transfer port injection, which is basically just fuel injected two strokes. And for those of you without that kind of money to spend, there's always the Electron carburetor with its metering rod technology. It may not be as easy as fuel injection, but it sure beats jetting. Now the expansion chamber is this big bulbous part of the pipe that hangs down in front of the bike and can easily come in contact with rocks, logs, and other obstacles and get dented and smashed. Not to mention it's ugly as hell and half of you probably didn't even realize that this is actually the head of the xenomorph from the Alien movies. But all joking aside, the expansion chamber's shape serves a very important purpose in the function of a two-stroke engine. Their shape is precisely calculated to reflect sonic waves back to the exhaust port and aid in preventing fresh premix from escaping the cylinder before combustion can take place. Any large dents can affect the timing of those sonic waves and potentially limit the performance of the two-stroke engine. But take heart, all is not lost. You can always buy yourself an aftermarket guard for your pipe. There's even a skid plate pipe guard combination like this one available. This thing looks pretty light. Might get a little heavy when it fills up with mud though. All right, so we're having a little problem with my two-stroke versus four-stroke comparison because of my unfamiliarity with two-strokes. Uh, by the book, uh, the correct jets are in the bike for our temperature and our altitude here at Sierra Vista. Maybe, maybe KTM puts out bad numbers, I don't know, but uh, that may not be the problem. I bought this JD jetting kit. I'm gonna rejet, put the new pipe on, uh, change the spark plug, 
Uh, we're gonna put it all back together. We're gonna see if the jetting and the pipe uh, fix the problem and we'll go from there, see what happens. I've had the bike for only a month and already I've spent more time wrenching on it, trying to get the jetting right or fix the leak prone Mikuni carburetor as I have riding it. And no matter how many advantages or how easy a two stroke is to work on, it's kind of been a drag. It's put a huge dent in my time to get these videos done and has really sapped my motivation. It's gotten to the point where I haven't even had time to ride the four stroke in weeks. I've become so obsessed with trying to keep an open mind about the two stroke that I have poured almost all of my time and money into trying to make sure that it's running right and getting the seat time that I need to get used to the characteristics of a two stroke dirt bike. And that's just not good. With the race season right around the corner, the battle between the 300 two stroke and the 354 stroke is starting to look pretty lopsided, but I'm not ready to call it yet. So there you have it. And that's just a small sample of what I've learned about two strokes over the last several weeks. Now I'm sure I left something out and I'm sure there's other advantages and disadvantages to two strokes that I might've forgotten about. And I'm sure there's plenty of you out there who are ready to give me some constructive criticism uh, down in the comments below. Just keep it clean. This is a family channel after all. And I want to say thanks. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Well, the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. May not be right for you. May not be right for some. When a man is born, he's a man of means. Then along come the two. They have nothing but their dreams that they got. Different strokes it takes. Different strokes it takes, different strokes for the world. Well, everybody's got their special kind of story. Everybody find a way to shine. It don't matter what you got, neither lot. Well, so what? They'll have theirs, and you have yours, and I'll have mine. And together we'll be fine. It takes different strokes for Yes, it does. It takes different strokes for the world.